Hi, my name is Jerry Wise, and this video is entitled The Power of Self-Differentiation. I've had a number of clients, in fact, many, many clients who have asked me if I would talk more about self-differentiation. Self-differentiation is not something you learn in a 15-minute video, and it's not something that's just easily grasped by uh, three bullet points or do step A, step B, step C, and you're there. It's a much deeper process than that. It really does involve deep uh, processes within us that are not easily uh, addressed in just a simple how-to method. It requires, I think, uh, actually it takes a lifetime, I think, to work on. However, I think a lot can be achieved by gaining even some measure of greater self-differentiation, where you seem to be freer, uh, less emotionally reactive, more mature, um, more ourselves, by doing the work of self-differentiation. First off, well, what is self-differentiation? Uh, self-differentiation implies that there's been some undifferentiation, meaning there's been some fusion or, or enmeshment or overcloseness going on that requires some self-differentiation, differing ourselves from uh, something or somewhat. And I think that that really is the process of growing up in which we have started out in our lives very dependent and very enmeshed and as we mature we become more differentiated and some people do that work and some people don't uh, it's often kind of a road less traveled not everyone is interested in self-differentiation some people like or enjoy or are happy with the enmeshment or the fusion that they have in their family of origin and in their own relationships, and, and that's fine for them. Other people choose a path of recovery and want to truly be their an authentic self. And that takes some work and some effort, some learning, some paradigm shifts, and I think that's what I wanted to talk about in this video, at least briefly, as much as I can in 15 minutes or so. As I mentioned, we began our life uh, kind of enmeshed, imprinted, fused with our family of origin. And that this process and this connectedness um, exists throughout our lives. How much we gain a sense of self-differentiation from it is the level to which we mature, we find our true selves, we enter into relationships, in a healthier, more differentiated way. I think we're also less likely to be reactive. We're less likely to be reactive to anxiety, conflicts, and um, panic within a system, within a group, within a, uh, an emotional field. We're less likely to be as t in tuned with that and so reactive with that. And so therefore we achieve a better sense of balance, stability, happiness, um, a clarity of thought and feeling. And I think that's what self-differentiation really provides for those who are pilgrims and who do that work of self-differentiation. Um, enmeshment or undifferentiating with our family of origin creates the ways we see our whole world the way our, we see our relationships, the way our, we see ourselves. This is truly the basis for our paradigm that we have. This lack of self, this undifferentiation, creates emotional reactivity, poor relationships, life's failures, painful depressions, and is the basis for and addictions, and it is the basis we see ourselves and our world. The more we gain the sense of self-differentiation, I think the less we are connected to all of those things I just mentioned. And we find a freedom from poor relationships, life failures, etc. With this understanding, we can begin to see a way to stabilize or mature 
our emotional life. When we address the root cause of our enmeshment and the root cause of our undifferentiation, we then begin to heal and develop our own emotional gyroscope that can, got a he that can kind of guide us and balance us in a much uh, more stable way. For self-differentiation, defining and managing self is truly the core of the work of therapy and of the recovery process. I believe the process of self-differentiation involves A, resolving childhood and adult enmeshment with our family of origin, created by wounds and imprinted intergenerational immaturity and immature paradigms. That's all of our inheritance from our growing up. And if we resolve those and define ourselves um, uh, in uh, contrast to those, we really can make a big difference in our lives. B, learning and practicing systems thinking, which is learning more about and practicing seeing things from a 30,000 foot view. I think the more immature you are emotionally, the more you see things on a six foot view. The more you grow in self-differentiation and maturity, the more you see things from a 30,000 foot view. Le uh, C, learning and practicing a healthy balance of the two forces of togetherness and separateness. Often that this has gotten out of whack when we in our family of origin, probably for the last five generations. Uh, it's an out of whack process of having too much togetherness too little separateness, too much separateness, too little togetherness, and that balance is off. And so the practice of maintaining that healthy balance of togetherness and separateness, here's fusion and there's cutoff, how do we have a healthy balance uh, of the two? And maintaining a healthy balance, that's a work of self-differentiation. Uh, uh, D, defining and managing self, your authentic self, while staying connected to others. And I think that's maintaining that balance. Defining yourself while staying connected. Usually we either have a hard time defining ourselves, but we stay overconnected, or we define ourselves while being underconnected. And either of these processes can cause lots of reactivity, lots of problems uh, within us and within our relationships. Increasing your self-differentiation or healing your undifferentiation is a lifelong work, as I've said. And I believe that the sooner you begin this work and the more stable your life becomes and the more you can stabilize your emotional life, the more you can increase your tolerance for joy, increase your tolerance for healthy relationships. Most of us don't think in relationship systems ways. Uh, we think in more individualistic ways. We think about our, ourselves as disconnected from our emotional systems and our family of origin. Oftentimes we see the root and beginning of all of our feelings that we feel inside as having nothing to do with our past. It only has to do with the present. And it has nothing to do with a larger system, only has to do with how I feel right now and the way I think my circumstances are just as I see them with my own eyes. That's not a very systems way of looking at things. And therefore our map for knowing what our feelings are about, where they come from, how do we manage them, is very truncated, and very myopic, very small. And that causes us difficulties in being able to grow up, mature, have healthy relationships, and self-differentiation as, I think, a way of thinking in a bigger way. I think of self-differentiation on a scale of 0 to 10, and several have used this concept. It's certainly not mine alone. I mean, I didn't think it up. It's been thought of ever since Murray Bowen started writing. 
And, you know, on the low level of self-differentiation, and again, this has nothing to do with someone's morality or goodness or badness or anything in terms of good or bad. It only has to do with where we are within our emotional systems. The low scale, where we have little self-differentiation from our family of origin and from others. On the higher end of the scale, say a 10 versus a 0, a 10, we have a strong self-differentiation from family of origin and others. The low number, we are victims of chronic anxiety and are too finely tuned to our family of origin and the groups or relationships in our lives. And uh, we tend to be less ourselves and more reactive to emotional systems. If we're higher on the scale, if we think subjectively, higher up on the scale, we are more truly ourselves, we are less reactive to emotional systems that we're a part of, family of origin, marriages, um, work, place, actually anywhere, because wherever we are on the scale of self-differentiation, we take that everywhere with us. So it's not just in our marriage, it's in all of our life. Uh, the high number, we are less finely tuned to our family of origin, uh, and to group and relationship anxiety, the lower we are in the scale, our thinking and feeling becomes blurred. Uh, we kind of feel-think. That's way of thinking it. On a 10, you tend to have thoughts and feelings. At a 0, 1, 2, we tend to have feel-think. It all just happens all at once. And we don't realize the separateness that's so important that's needed so we're not able to think very clearly, we just feel think. And on the high scale, our thinking and feelings are much more defined and clear, and again, more ourselves and less reactive. So how do we increase our level, level of self-differentiation? Well, we resolve our emotional glue between us and our family of origin. That's one nice statement that takes years to do, but it's a beginning place that we begin to understand and learn and that with real work, even small changes can make huge effects and changes in our own life. By the way, I didn't say that we should cut off from our family of origin because a cutoff is equal to too much fusion. Enmeshment is equal to too much fusion. Cutting off is also equal to too much fusion. If we neither need to cut off or enmesh, then we're in the middle and we're self-differentiated. And so I don't suggest cutting off from your family of origin, but resolve the enmeshment and intergenerational intimidation, fear, and unhealthy bonds within your family of origin. And this will affect every other relationship in your life. All of us have been imprinted by our family of origin. We are all stuck, more or less, in our emotional glue of the emotional systems that we're a part of. Breaking free from this glue by internally letting our family go through resolving hurts, triangles, dysfunctional patterns, we can define ourselves and experience emotional freedom. As a result, we are less a product of our family of origin and more the real us, and who we choose to be, and who we desire to be. Secondly, we learn to think, see, and feel in systems ways. Learning to see emotional fields that we operate in, these include our family of origin, this process is essential and important in that it will help us free us to be more ourselves. And that being able to zoom in and out meaning zoom in on content, content or zooming in on a six-foot level and be able to zoom out to a 30-foot level is so empowering. And if one can learn to do that, which we all can learn, we can really, it's a lot of leverage for us to be ourselves. It really does empower us to be who we want to be. A wife, let's say, has betrayed her husband uh, that was some time ago. They're in the process of rebuilding their relationship. The husband recognizes that the wife has stayed late at work. And 
this ignites the husband because his anxiety, probably chronic anxiety, has now just been uh, ignited. And he really comes to her and says, what were you doing at work late tonight? What does that mean? And uh, the wife stays at work one night. Her husband complains to her. And he says, you know, I, I don't think I can ever trust you again. The wife can say at the content level, the wife can stay at the content level and argue over the point. And again, this is the six foot level. And she can say, well, I only did it once. I only have one affair in all of our 25 years. Uh, John or the husband, you were a workaholic and never paid attention to me. Uh, or our marriage was hurting long before I had the affair. And, and honey, what about the times you lied to me about money in our relationship? She can be defensive. And then we have an argument between he and she. He doesn't feel more comforted. And she feels more upset. And now the relationship has more distance in it. Or she can do the work of self-differentiation. Resolve her family of origin, fusions, triangles, and hurts, and can then stay calm and not have her buttons pushed by John to say to John, her husband, I'm sure you're still hurting. I want you to know I'm sorry. I love you, and there's no one else I want to be with other than you. To argue keeps this couple stuck in the weeds of content. To address what John's doing or address what's going on in the process is to see the system at work. John feels insecure and he begins to move away from uh, his wife, Ellen, and he feels frightened about being intimate with her, so he moves away by starting an argument. And instead of staying in the argument, she sees what's going on between the two of them at a 30,000 foot view and addresses that problem rather than the content. But if we're not free inside to do that, if we're still stuck and enmeshed in our own ways, family of origin and present, we can't see that what process is going on, what's really going on, we just get stuck in the content. When John makes these statements, he is feeling distant, fearful, jealous, and cut off from Ellen. Ellen can learn to recognize this and address what John is pained about rather than what John expresses. And this is what I call learning to shift between the content and the process. Also, John can learn to do that too. He gets ignited by feeling distant, fearful, jealous, and cut off because of his own family of origin and enmeshment and problems that he hasn't resolved. And, and just brings them over and puts them layers on top of the relationship with Ellen. It's important that we sometimes address content, but very important that we learn to see process. But this occurs when we learn to see our own process in our own family of origin and beyond. Clients talk about how much the work of self-differentiation has improved their lives, reduced their reactivity, empowered them in many areas of their lives and careers. It has improved their marriages and clarified and matured their thoughts and emotions. I think there's a lot more to learn about self-differentiation. This is an unfair overview of self-differentiation, a very limited one. But I hope it gets you thinking about that. There are books to read by Harriet Lerner, The Dance of Anger. She's one of the few Bowen authors out there. Uh, uh, Robert, Roberta Gilbert is another one. Extraordinary Relationships is another book you might want to take a look at. Uh, I hope this video has been a help to you. Uh, if I can be of help, give me a call. I, you can see me in my office or we can do Skype counseling if that would help you. Uh, if you're not from the Indiana area. And I sure hope uh, you've been benefited by the video, and thanks for listening.